A few days back, Apple launched two new products and the internet went ape shit on the monitor stand. You know what I think? I think we have so much to learn from these two new products. And this is what this episode is about. The first thing that we can learn is the history of the Mac Pro. For some of you are complaining that the specs of the new Mac Pro is so much meant for video editors and not photographers and designers. That's true. Sticking to the legacy of the first generation of the Mac Pro, it was meant for video editors, high definition video editing. Launched in 2006, this is the first generation of the Mac Pro. This product was created and meant for high definition video editors. This design of the first generation went on for six years. So it's not surprising that Mac Pros last a long time. Unlike your iPads, which every year you have a new design, the Mac Pro seems to hold like five or six years before they get a new redesign. Well, the strength of the first generation is the upgradability. A lot of Mac Pro users are still upgrading their Mac Pros now. In fact, if you go to YouTube, you can see a lot of them are teaching you how you can change the graphic cards, how you can change the processor. So modularity is the keyword here with the first generation. The next Mac Pro design is this, popularly called the trash can. It was launched in 2013. Now what's cool about, well personally, I find that this is the most unupgradable Mac Pro. When it came out, a lot of people were kind of worried, but it's just so beautiful. It's made of extruded aluminum. And you know what's interesting about Apple? Every once in a while, it comes out with a product that is completely not Apple. Take a look at the G4. Take a look at the 20th anniversary Mac. And take a look at the trash can. These are all iconic Apple products that if you own, you shouldn't be selling them because they will fetch amazing price. Look at the 20th anniversary Mac. This is a price that is selling on eBay now. All right, now let's move on to the Pro Display XDR. You know, every time Apple launch a new screen, there's so many technical specs that I believe not many people really understand. Well, why do I say that? Notice that the claps don't come that fast. Huh? It's 25 times better than a typical LCD display. Well, the first thing we need to understand is high dynamic range, HDR. It means the ability for you to descend from the brightest bright to the darkest dark. Well, Apple's marketing manager says it very well in this video. HDR is a way to bring content to life by better reflecting what the eye can see in the real world. And the eye sees the brightest specular highlights, really dark blacks, vibrant rich color, and all the details in between. Well, Apple says that this screen goes beyond HDR. That's why it's called XDR, extreme XDR. You know, Apple like to do that. Throw in a new word, give it a new acronym. Another measurement of brightness is lumens. Lumen is the unit of measurement describing light output, but it's more than that. That is the measurement of how much of reflected light that is coming out from an area which is one meter by one meter, and this area is again one meter away from this light source. That is one lumen. So lumens is typically used to measure how much of light that is projected to a screen, kind of like your LCD projector. The new Pro Display boasts a thousand nits. Nits, unlike lumens, is the measurement of light that is coming off directly to your eye. Kind of like you sitting there and watching a TV. See, the light that comes off the TV goes to your eye directly. Unlike lumen, it's not projected and bounced off a reflected area. So a thousand nits is a lot. That is why the screen can get hot. But don't forget, most TVs that you have in your living room or your lounge goes beyond a thousand nits. Go to the comment section below and tell us why you think that the TV in your living room is throwing out more than a thousand nits. The next tech spec that we gotta learn is the contrast ratio. The new Pro Display boasts a million to one contrast ratio. What does it mean? Contrast ratio is the measurement of the difference between the brightest bright in your picture compared to the darkest dark in your picture. Well, to understand this better, take a look at this picture now. This is the brightest bright of the picture. This is the darkest part of the picture. A good monitor can show you all the details that is in this dark portion. A lousy one 
this might start getting muddy and you might not be able to see the tones of shades of shadow or the highlights. So a screen with a high contrast ratio, then you can see more details in the highlight areas and also the shadow areas. So a screen with very high contrast ratio is desired. So if you look at this photo with a screen with high contrast ratio, it will look like this. And if you have a lousy one, you notice that you lose all these details. Color space. What are color spaces? Well, you heard of the Adobe RGB, the sRGB, the DCI-P3. You know what, guys? We need a dedicated episode just to discuss color space. So next episode, we're going to talk about why we have all these color spaces, what they are and what do they do and why do we have P3? When do you use sRGB? When Adobe RGB? You know, it makes me think that what are the displays that are out there in the market that is as kick-ass as the Pro Display XDR. On top of the list, I can think of ISO. There's the Dell and the BenQ. A few days after the launch of the Pro Display, MSI from Taiwan launched a new screen. And this is the ad that poked fun of Apple's Pro Display. Well, the first monitor that you might be interested in if 5999 is not your budget, would be the LG 27MD5KA-B. Brands, I don't understand you guys. Do you have a department with these three guys that just cook up names like this and serial number like this just to fuck up our life, right? That's, that's your ultimate aim, right? The LG 27MD5KVZP-27D. It's, it's the interesting thing is, before this Pro Display, Apple is selling this screen. That's the recommended screen for the Mac Pro. It also supports the DCI-P3 color space, and the claim is that it can hit 99% of this color space. Though the needs is only 500, truth be told, not many monitors can go 1,000 needs. The contrast ratio of this screen though is 1,200 to 1. Makes you wonder how accurate this 1 million to 1 contrast ratio that Apple is claiming now, isn't it? Here's another interesting monitor that you might be interested in that may come close to the Apple Pro Display. The BenQ PV3200PT, another fantastic model number that you can easily remember here. This is not a 6K though, it's a 4K resolution, but it boasts a contrast ratio claimed here to be 20 million to 1. It says here dynamic. Though the static can go up to only a thousand to one contrast ratio. No mention of the P3 color space support, but it boasts a hundred percent sRGB. It's also 10 bit and it's really good, I hear, for video production. The next one on the list would be interestingly the newly launched MSI monitor. And this is a spec compared to the Apple computer. So what's interesting is all these screens are not cheap either. They're clocking in at US dollar a grand two on average. Well, don't be too happy though. MSI did officially say that this product is only going to be available next year. Makes you wonder whether we'll be just looking at this picture, that's all. Guys, you know what I was thinking? We should write to MSI and ISO to get them to send their best screen and let's do a head-to-head -head comparison and see how good they are compared to Apple's Pro Display. What do you guys think? Yeah! Right to them. The moment you're waiting for the part of the show where I talk about the stand. Seriously, Apple could have just gone out there and take the price of that stand, that $1,000 and put it onto that screen price and hide it in there. Well, I'm not supporting Apple in any way, but it makes business sense that a lot of video editors like us prefer to use our own mounts and our own stand. And some of us prefer to work standing up. So. I always felt that monitors should have their, you know what? These are a list of stands that you can get in the market that is way cheaper than a grand. Let's go through that list. Choose your favorite stand. You know what I think? I think manufacturers in Shenzhen, China is gonna come out with stands that's gonna look and function almost as good as Apple's $1,000 stand at US dollar 199. Just you wait and see. This is gonna happen two weeks after the monitor hits the market. China. 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 So you shouldn't worry about Apple stand. How many of you really go out and buy Apple's 
original charger. Well, you know what? There's one more thing that we got to learn here. That's this word here, tripophobia. That means people who are afraid of irregular holes. That's a scary thing with the new Mac Pro and the new display. It's just filled with all these irregular holes at the back. They kind of remind you of scary pictures like this. You know, there are a lot of people out there who are really afraid of these holes and patterns. So there's something that you might want to think about before you buy that apple. Or you can actually go get duct tapes and stick over these holes. And then that's going to make the whole screen so hot because Apple says that these holes are necessary for it to be able to emit up to how many million what? How many million nits? 1,000 nits? 1,000 nits. Well, I'll catch you again in the next episode where we go through the current news and trending happenings on photography, movie making, display, screens and stands. See ya.